All right. So my talk is called Future Proofing Yourself in the Reinvention Revolution. How many of you have personal brands? Raise your hand. OK. See so about like a quarter of you. The truth is that all of us have personal brands. You might not know it. You might not like it. But the truth is that we do have them. As Jeff Bezos said, your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. A lot of people get confused between branding and marketing. So today we're going to learn about branding, but not in the way that you traditionally know it. A lot of people think that branding is, is marketing, it's self-promotion. But today's talk is not about fonts or Facebook. It's about personal reinvention. We've seen so much change in the last several years. Uh, so many companies are needing to reinvent themselves faster and more frequently than ever before. But it's not just companies. It's us as individuals that need to reinvent ourselves. We're also seeing that uh, you know, the, the amount of reinvention that's happening, we're seeing today that 20.6 of companies have needed to, in 2022, 2022 needed to, 20% have needed to reinvent themselves in order to survive and thrive. And that's faster than ever before. I'll tell you a story. So the reason why this is so important to me is because I am someone that had to reinvent myself reactively. I didn't do it proactively. And the reason I'm here today is to give you some lessons and some, some insights on how to be more, more proactive in your reinvention. Almost a decade ago, I was Salima 1.0. I was traveling the world. I was working for an international development bank and all over Latin America, working with banks, working with governments. And I also had a side hustle working with a Silicon Valley company called Elance. Does anyone know Elance? It then became Elance Odesk, and then it merged and became Upwork. And I, I was basically trying to teach entrepreneurs how to build remote teams. We had a partnership with WeWork. It was a lot of fun. However, after I pivoted out of my, my day job and I was working with Elance, and then I also uh, started this digital marketing agency, with, which was a HubSpot reseller agency, I thought I had everything I wanted. I was like 27 years old. My life seemed really good. But one day, all of that started drying up. I got laid off from both those jobs. My house had a fire that I just purchased, and everything, my entire life was in shambles, in what people might know as a life quake. Has anyone experienced that before? Yeah. So that was really hard, because I was being reactive about it. And I didn't really, you, you, I felt some whispers. I felt some itches. I kind of felt my inside voice telling me, you know, maybe you need to make a change. There are people telling me, maybe you need to make a pivot. And I was like, I'm comfortable. I'm going to stay right here. Then I evolved into Selima 2.0. After I recovered from that crisis, which I'll explain some tools and how I did that in a minute, I was now teaching design thinking. I was uh, in entrepreneurship at Johns Hopkins University. I was working with the World Bank on how do we solve problems such as uh, food security in the Middle East and North Africa with refugees. And I was looking at things like hydroponics, aquaponics, aeroponics, vertical farming, 3D printing, and insect farming. And it felt like my life had gotten better and I had recovered from that, that big life quake. However, uh, I was also speaking around the world and I was, you know, it seemed really great, but I wasn't living my, my life purpose. And so even though I was really passionate about entrepreneurs, I felt like I wasn't directly making the impact I wanted to make. Even though I was teaching it, I was uh, working with it at the research level, I felt like I was missing that direct impact. And so that being said, you know, branding, the first thing you want to do is you want to craft your positioning. There was something that was misaligned about my branding, because I really loved entrepreneurship, but then I was trying to do all this other stuff, and there was some misalignment. So people were like, what do you do? You do so many things. And we see that today. Do, do any of you wear multiple hats where you're kind of like, people are confused? Uh, what are you an expert at? Why should people hire you? And so I was one of those. People were really confused. And so I learned the importance of being very clear with my positioning. And when I say positioning, it's not necessarily where have I been in the past? A lot of times we're like, OK, let's look at our LinkedIn and look at it like a CV or a resume. Or we are who we've been in the past. But positioning is using your hero story from your past or taking parts of your past. But who do you want to be? And position yourself towards that future version of yourself. A good example is that when I was writing my book, or when I finished writing my book, I was looking for endorsements. 
and I reached out to lots of people. I pitched to all kinds of people, including Seth Godin, Ariana Huffington, Adam Grant, and they responded within a few minutes, some of them, which surprised me. And the reason is because I had a personal brand. I developed, when I decided to become an author, one of the first things I learned was that you don't just put your book on Amazon and be successful. You have to start from day one, marketing yourself, branding yourself, building your platform, not just when the book is done. And so, uh, so yeah, having that personal brand really, really helped. And, and another example is you don't have to be, you know, it's not just the famous people. Another example is, uh, you know, my hairdresser, Ginger, she is a curly hair expert. So she brands herself as like the, na the nation's capital's curly hair expert. Everyone knows her if you have curly hair in Washington, DC. And so there's something that's unique about her. She's really owned her niche. And, and so really knowing what's different about you and what's desired by other people is the first step when you're uh, trying to put together your brand and your positioning. And going back to this concept of desired and different, here I have a framework that you'll see. It's in my book. But essentially, you want to be non-obvious. What's that thing that's not just desired by other people, but different? That thing that's compelling, that thing that's unique. And the example here is, I don't know if any of you know that TikTok quesadilla that was up during the pandemic, yeah? Uh, where you fold the quesadilla into, into four quarters. There's like four quarters, and you fold it up. And it went viral on, on TikTok during the pandemic when people were at home cooking. But it's basically, the reason it, was so, it went viral was that it was non-obvious. All the ingredients were the same as a regular quesadilla. Um, but it was more than ordinary, it wasn't dull, it wasn't strange or odd, but it was non-obvious. And so our goal is when we're positioning ourselves to be non-obvious. One way to go about doing that when you're figuring out how to position yourself is doing a 100 coffee challenge. Sometimes we think we know who we are, how we want to brand ourselves, but the best way to really go about that process, especially if you're trying to figure out who do I want to become in the future? Sometimes we can be lost as to like, who will I be in three to five years? And we can be so stuck in our grind and, and our day to day that it's sometimes hard to know who should we become. You know that it's important to reinvent yourself more regularly and more frequently than before, but you're not really sure who that next version of yourself is. And so one thing that I recommend and that I did for myself was I would do these 100 coffee challenges. In fact, when I lost those two jobs and I went on this eat, pray, self-love trip when my house burnt down. To, I went to India, to Thailand, to Bali. When I came back, I'm Canadian. I got denied entry into the United States. And I had two weeks the immigration officer gave me. He was like, nope, you don't get 180 days. You get two weeks to figure out your situation. So I went between two organizations that I knew I could probably get a job and a visa if I worked really, really hard. And I was setting up eight to 10 coffees a day. I had two weeks to figure this out in Washington, DC. And within those two weeks, I got two offers, and one of them was that hydroponics work with the World Bank. The Country Coffee Challenge, I've also applied with my book. When I got stuck in the early stages of writing my book, I got some advice to do some interviews, and I was like, let me take this to the next level, and let me do a 100 Coffee Challenge. And what I found was I interviewed 100 people for the book, which is amazing. It led to so many collaborations, and it got me to like book tours, and it helped me incredibly. But I also learned a lot about myself. Oftentimes, it wasn't, we think that we can just go within. And I, you know, I was in India, I was doing all this yoga, Ayurveda, meditation. I'm like, I, I can discover myself myself. But what I discovered through the 100 Coffee Challenge was that other people were finding me. And they were seeing me how I was showing up in that moment. Second point is, you want to position yourself intentionally. And... This is not about self-promotion. It's really about how are you desired and different? What's distinct about you? And leaning into that, owning that. Salima 3.0, yes, did the TEDx. Salima 3.0 decided to own her passion and her, her love to help entrepreneurs. And when the pandemic happened, that accelerated that whole process. A lot of my friends and colleagues were stuck at home and they were struggling with their businesses. They were trying to figure out, how do I make my business work online? And that's when I stepped in and said, you know what, I'm not gonna just coach them and give them some advice and mentorship. I wanna become the team behind the scenes to these entrepreneurs. And that's when I created my current business, Ripple Impact. I also launched the book and uh, wanted to go around the world and, and impact as many people as possible. And that became my brand today. That's a picture from last month, my team in Colombia, and then my team in Pakistan in January. And 
My third point is you want to reinvent yourself constantly. Listen to that inner voice. Don't wait until you have a life quake. Don't wait until your house burns down or you lose that job. Uh, really think about who you want to become. Do that 100 coffee challenge and be really proactive about that reinvention process. Madonna is a great example of someone who reinvents herself. Every time she releases a new album, she changes her fashion style, her hair, even her husband sometimes. <laughs> so we are living in this reinvention revolution. After you go through that initial life quake, like I did when my house burnt down, or other times I've gone through a lot. I've, I've you know, been divorced. I've lost my mom at the age of 16. Uh, when you go through that, it gets easier. You'll still go through these reinventions, but when you have one really, really hard life quake, it gets easier to get through the rest. It's not, it's not easy, but it's easier. And it's kind of like you see here, from the broom to the vacuum cleaner to the, to the Roomba. You don't have to change significantly, but there's different iterations. We're not onions trying to appeal to the core. We're like ripples. We're constantly evolving, and we have to keep up with that before the world or circumstances dictate that. And the three, take three key takeaways is, first, you want to craft your positioning position yourself intentionally, and then reinvent yourself constantly. Who is Salima 4.0? I'm still figuring that out. Um, I'm here at LEAD, learning how to be a better leader for my company that's growing. And I'm doing another 100 coffee challenge. So if you want to grab virtual coffee, I'm happy to talk to you. And you never know what comes from that. But I know it's a great way to, to discover ourselves and figure out who do we want to be in the future and how do we accelerate that. And that's it. Thank you.